The Janissaries were elite infantry units that formed the Ottoman Sultan's household troops and bodyguards. Sultan Murad I created the force in 1383. The number of Janissaries grew from 20,000 in 1575 to 49,000, dropped to a low of 17,000, then rebounded to 135,000 in 1826. They began as an elite corps of slaves recruited from young Christian boys, and became famed for internal cohesion cemented by strict discipline and order. By 1620 they were hereditary and corrupt in an impediment to reform. The corps was abolished by Sultan Mahmud II in 1826 in the auspicious incident in which 6,000 or more were executed. Origins some historians such as Patrick Cahan Ross date the formation of the Janissaries to around 1365 during the rule of Orhan's son Murad I, the first sultan of the Ottoman Empire. The Janissaries became the first Ottoman standing army, replacing forces that mostly consisted of tribal warriors whose loyalty and morale were not always guaranteed. From the 1380s to 1648, the Janissaries were gathered through the Debzirma system which was abolished in 1638. This was the taking of non-Muslim boys, notably Anatolian and Balkan Christians. Jews were never subject to Debzirma, nor were children from Turkic families. According to the Encyclopaedia Britannica, in early days, all Christians were enrolled indiscriminately. Later, those from Albania, Bosnia, and Bulgaria were preferred. According to Dimitri Kitsikas, Christians from northern Greece and Serbia were preferred. The Janissaries were capicolari, door servants, or slaves of the port, neither freemen nor ordinary slaves. They were subjected to strict discipline, but were paid salaries and pensions upon retirement and formed their own distinctive social class. As such, they became one of the ruling classes of the Ottoman Empire, rivaling the Turkish aristocracy. The brightest of the Janissaries were sent to the palace institution, Enderun. Through a system of meritocracy, the Janissaries held enormous power, stopping all efforts at reform of the military. According to military historian Michael Antonucci and economic historians Glenn Hubbard and Tim Kane, the Turkish administrators would scour their regions every five years for the strongest sons of the Sultan's Christian subjects. These boys were then taken from their parents and given to Turkish families in the provinces to learn Turkish language and customs, and the rules of Islam. The recruits were indoctrinated into Islam, forced into circumcision and supervised 24 hours a day by eunuchs. They were subjected to severe discipline, being prohibited from growing a beard, taking up a skill other than soldiering, and marrying. As a result, the Janissaries were extremely well-disciplined troops, and became members of the Askari class, the first-class citizens or military class. Most were non-Muslims because it was not permissible to enslave a Muslim. The Janissary system was introduced in the 14th century. It was a similar system to the Iranian Safavid, Afsharid, and Qayyar Irigulams, who were drawn from converted Circassians, Georgians, and Armenians. And in the same way as with the Ottomans Janissaries who had to replace the unreliable Ghazis, they were initially created as a counterbalance to the tribal, ethnic and favored interests the Keys Ilbash gave, which make a system imbalanced. The Janissary Corps was a trained and loyal group of slaves to the Sultan. In the late 16th century, a Sultan gave in to the pressures of the Corps and permitted Janissary children to become members of the Corps, a practice strictly forbidden for the previous 300 years. They also became rent-seeking and sought protection of their special rights and advantages. According to paintings of the era, they were also permitted to grow beards. Consequently, the formerly strict rules of succession became open to interpretation. 
while they advanced their own power. The Janissaries also helped to keep the system from changing in other progressive ways and according to some scholars the core was most responsible for the political stagnation of Istanbul. Greek historian Dimitri Kitsikas in his book Turk Union Imperator Lagu states that many Christian families were willing to comply with the Devs Irma, because it offered a possibility of social advancement. Conscripts could one day become Janissary colonels, statesmen who might one day return to their home region as governors, or even Grand Viziers or Bailey Bees. Some of the most famous Janissaries include George Kastriot Iskanderberg, an Albanian who defected and led a 20-year Albanian revolt against the Ottomans. Another was Sokolu Mehmed Pasa, a Bosnian who became a Grand Vizier, served three sultans, and was the de facto ruler of the Ottoman Empire for more than 14 years. Characteristics The Janissary corps were distinctive in a number of ways. They wore unique uniforms, were paid regular salaries for their service, marched to music, lived in barracks and were the first corps to make extensive use of firearms. A Janissary battalion was a close-knit community, effectively the soldier's family. By tradition, the Sultan himself, after authorizing the payments to the Janissaries, visited the barracks dressed as a Janissary trooper, and received his pay alongside the other men of the 1st Division. They also served as policemen, palace guards, and firefighters during peacetime. The Janissaries also enjoyed far better support on campaign than other armies of the time. They were part of a well-organized military machine, in which one support corps prepared the roads while others pitched tents and baked the bread. Their weapons and ammunition were transported and resupplied by the Sebasi Corps. They campaigned with their own medical teams of Muslim and Jewish surgeons and their sick and wounded were evacuated to dedicated mobile hospitals, set up behind the lines. These differences, along with an impressive war record, made the Janissaries a subject of interest and study by foreigners during their own time. Although eventually the concept of a modern army incorporated and surpassed most of the distinctions of the Janissaries and the Corps was eventually dissolved, the image of the Janissary has remained as one of the symbols of the Ottomans in the Western psyche. By the mid-18th century they had taken up many trades and gained the right to marry and enroll their children in the corps and very few continued to live in the barracks. Many of them became administrators and scholars. Retired or discharged Janissaries received pensions, and their children were also looked after. This evolution away from their original military vocation was the major cause of the system's demise, recruitment, training and status. The first Janissary units were formed from prisoners of war and slaves, probably as a result of the Sultan taking his traditional one-fifth share of his army's plunder in kind rather than cash. However the continuing enslaving of Dimi constituted a continuing abuse of a subject's population. Initially the recruiters favored Greeks and Albanians. As borders of the Ottoman Empire expanded, the Devzirma was extended to include Bulgarians, Croats, Serbs, Armenians and later, in rare instances, Romanians, Georgians, Ukrainians and Southern Russians. The Janissaries first began enrolling outside the Devzirma system during the reign of Sultan Murad III. After this period, volunteers were enrolled, mostly of Turkish origin. By 1683, Sultan Mehmet IV abolished the Devzirma, as increasing numbers of originally Muslim Turkish families had already enrolled their own sons into the force hoping for a lucrative career. The prescribed daily rate of pay for entry-level Janissaries in the time of Ahmet I was three axes. Promotion to a cavalry regiment implied a minimum salary of ten axes. Janissaries received a sum of 12 axes every three months for clothing incidentals and 30 axes for weaponry with an additional allowance for ammunition as well. Training When a non-Muslim boy was recruited under the Devzirma system, he would first be sent to selected Turkish families in the provinces to learn how to speak Turkish the rules of Islam and the customs and cultures of Ottoman society. 
After completion of this period, Asima boys would be gathered to be trained in Enderun's Asima Oglan School at the capital city. At the school, young cadets would be selected for their talents in different areas to train as engineers, artisans, riflemen, clerics, archers, artillery, and so forth. Janissaries trained under strict discipline with hard labor and in practically monastic conditions in Asima Oglin schools, where they were expected to remain celibate. Unlike other Muslims, they were expressly forbidden to wear beards, only a mustache. These rules were obeyed by Janissaries, at least until the 18th century when they also began to engage in other crafts and trades, breaking another of the original rules. In the late 16th century a sultan gave in to the pressures of the Janissary corps and permitted Janissary children to become members of the corps, a practice strictly forbidden for 300 years. They also became rent-seeking and made goals to protect their special rights and advantages. Consequently, succession rules, formerly strict, became open to interpretation. They gained their own power but kept the system from changing in other progressive ways. For all practical purposes Janissaries belonged to the Sultan and they were regarded as the protectors of the throne and the Sultan. Janissaries were taught to consider the core as their home and family, and the Sultan as their father. Only those who proved strong enough earned the rank of true Janissary at the age of 24 or 25. The OCAK inherited the property of dead Janissaries, thus acquiring wealth. Janissaries also learned to follow the dictates of the dervish Saint Haji Bektish Veli, disciples of whom had blessed the first troops. Bektashi served as a kind of chaplain for Janissaries. In this and in their secluded life, Janissaries resembled Christian military orders like the Knights Hospitaller. As a symbol of their devotion to the order, Janissaries wore special hats called Bork. These hats also had a holding place in front, called the Kashuk like for a spoon. This symbolized the Kashuk Ligi, or the Brotherhood of the Spoon, which reflected a sense of comradeship among the Janissaries who ate, slept, fought and died together. Janissary Corps The Corps was organized in Orsis. An order was headed by a Korbachi. All Autos together comprised the Janissary Corps proper and its organization, named OCAK. Suleiman I had 165 Autos and the number increased over time to 196. While the Sultan was the supreme commander of the Ottoman army and of the Janissaries in particular, the corps was organized and led by a commander, the Aga. The corps was divided into three sub-corps, the Semart, with 101 Autos, the Balix or Bulux, with 61 Autos, the Sekban or Senen, with 34 Autos. In addition there were also 34 autos of the Ajemi. A semi-autonomous Janissary Corps was permanently based in Algiers. Originally Janissaries could be promoted only through seniority and within their own order. They could leave the unit only to assume command of another. Only Janissaries' own commanding officers could punish them. The rank names were based on positions in the kitchen staff or the royal hunters, perhaps to emphasize that Janissaries were servants of the Sultan. Local Janissaries, stationed in a town or city for a long time, were known as Yulayas core strength. Even though the Janissaries were part of the royal army and personal guards of the Sultan, the core was not the main force of the Ottoman military. In the classical period, Janissaries were only one-tenth of the overall Ottoman army. While the traditional Turkish cavalry made up the rest of the main battle force, According to David Nicole, the number of Janissaries in the 14th century was 1,000 and about 6,000 in 1475. The same source estimates the number of Timali Saipahi, the provincial cavalry which constituted the main force of the army at 40,000. Documentation from the 1620s and 1630s recording troop mobilization levels for two middle-sized campaigns suggests that at a time when full Janissary, 
Membership in the Istanbul barracks amounted to some 30,000 men. Those actually deployed at the front ranged between 20,000 and 25,000. A roll call held in Hungary in 1541, reflecting the actual deployed strength of the Ottoman regular army forces participating in campaign, registered 15,612 men as present. Of these approximately 6,350 were Janissaries, 3,700 were Saipais and another 1,650 were members of the artillery corps. The remaining one quarter were mostly non-combatants. It does not follow from the fact that 18,000 Janissaries were present for salary distributions in the field that even they took a very active role in the fighting equipment. During the initial period of formation, Janissaries were expert archers, but they began adopting firearms as soon as such became available during the 1440s. The siege of Vienna in 1529 confirmed the reputation of their engineers, e.g., sappers and miners. In melee combat they used axes and killes. Originally in peacetime they could carry only clubs or daggers, unless they served as border troops. Turkish Yatagan swords were the signature weapon of the Janissaries, almost a symbol of the corps. Janissaries who guarded the palace carried long shafted axes and halberds. By the early 16th century, the Janissaries were equipped with and were skilled with muskets. In particular, they used a massive trench gun, firing an 80mm ball, which was feared by their enemies. Janissaries also made extensive use of early grenades and hand cannons, such as the abuse gun. Pistols were not initially popular, but they became so after the Cretan War. Battles the Ottoman Empire used Janissaries in all its major campaigns, including the 1453 capture of Constantinople, the defeat of the Egyptian Mamluks and wars against Hungary and Austria. Janissary troops were always led to the battle by the Sultan himself, and always had a share of the loot. The Janissary Corps was the only infantry division of the Ottoman army. In battle the Janissaries' main mission was to protect the Sultan, using cannon and smaller firearms, and holding the center of the army against enemy attack during the strategic fake forfeit of Turkish cavalry. The Janissary Corps also included smaller expert teams, explosive experts, engineers and technicians, sharpshooters and sappers who dug tunnels under fortresses, etc. Janissaries battling the Knights Hospitaller during the Siege of Rhodes in 1522. Battle of Mohacs, 1526. A Janissary, a Pasha and cannon batteries at the Siege of Estegum in 1543. Sultan Murad III's expedition to Revan. Decline. The Janissaries were once a valiant military force for the Ottoman Empire, but by the 18th century that was not the case. The reason for this was because their discipline had decreased as the Janissaries had grown accustomed to a civilian life. Instead of being a full-time standing army whose only job was to train, the Janissaries began engaging in business and having families. These non-military activities and privileges made them less inclined towards combat. As a result, the military might of the Ottoman Empire began to decline.